Today we're going to have a look at how you use attributes in Unity. These attributes can be used to display things within the editor about your script. For example, you can use headings, you can put ranges on integers, you can display private variables and hide public variables. I'm just going to go and show you the ones that really focus on the layout. There are actually a whole load more of them if you do some investigation, but this should be a pretty good list of the ones that work with the layout. So first up, let's make a script. And now let's make an empty game object and put it on that. So let's double click this and open it in Visual Studio and we can start working on some different examples. We're not going to need our start or update function, so let's delete these. But the first thing that you can do is you can add a heading. Whenever you add these attributes, you add them in the square brackets. You don't need to finish the lines with a semicolon and that's all you need to do. Now let's add a private variable and make it, and make it so that you can see it. To do this, you use serialize field. Now let's save this and have a look in Unity. You can now see that you have your heading and you can see your private integer. Next up, let's make a public integer that's hidden. And now let's have a look in Unity. You can see that the public integer doesn't show. Let's do a float with a range next. I'm also going to add a tooltip for this. Now, you can make these two separate square brackets, but you can also join these attributes with a comma. And now we just need to make a variable for this. Let's save this and have a look what it looks like in Unity. So you can now see that we have a float with a range. And as you drag this across, you get, uh, you get your variables from 0 to 100. You also, if you hover over the float with range, you get the tooltip that we put in. So let's go back to our script. You can also set an integer that has a minimum value. So you use the min attribute for that. There isn't a max attribute, so you can only do the min. Let's test this and see how it goes. So I'm now going to try and put one into it, and you can see that it goes to two, which was the minimum value that we set. Now let's move on to doing some things that you can do with text. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space between that because we're now moving on from integers to strings and you can use the space attribute to do this. You can put any number that you want into here and obviously the larger the number, the larger the space. So first up I'm going to do a string that has a multi-line and then I'm going to do a string that has a text area. So let's make, let's declare both of those. Let's save this and have a look what it turns out like. So you can see I have a multi-line here. It will always display three lines. Here we have a text area. And what will happen here is you'll see that you'll get the scroll bar on the side when you get too big. And you can also see that we've left quite a large space here using our space attribute. So there's a few more things we can do, so let's go back to our script. So this will be the last thing that I'm going to show, and it'll be the color usage. You can use this to turn off the alpha channel, and you can also use it to turn on the HDR channel. So you get two variables here. The first one is if you want to show the alpha channel and the second one is if you want to show the HDR channel. 
By default, the alpha channel is on. So let's set these both to false to see what happens. And let's save this and have a look in Unity. You'll now see that when I click on the color, I don't have an alpha channel here. Let's go back to Unity and change them both to true. You can now see that we have our alpha channel back and we have HDR. Just to make it clear, I'm going to add one more color. And you can see the default is that you get an alpha channel, but you don't get HDR. So here's all the different attributes that just work out of the box. You can extend them with the editor, but I just wanted to make this list because they're not that easy to find in the documentation. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, please feel free to like, subscribe or comment. It really helps me as I'm trying to grow the channel. I hope you enjoy your game development.